So hi, my name is Matt Lamana. I'm a paleontologist at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the United States. And uh, I am here to tell you about our recent expedition to the Estancia Laguna Palacios uh, in, here in Chubut province in central Patagonia, Argentina. So we had a team of about 10 people um, consisting of uh, scientists from the Universidad Nacional de la Patagonia San Juan Bosco here in Comodoro Rivadavia, uh, a scientist from the CENPAT, the Centro Nacional Patagonico in Puerto Madryn, um, a volunteer from Sarmiento, several students from here in Comodoro, geologists, uh, paleontology students, and then two other, besides me, two other colleagues from the Carnegie Museums in Pittsburgh, uh, Lindsley Church, uh, who's a curatorial assistant in my department, and Kara Fixie, who works with our membership division. And um, we had a wonderful team. We went to Buen Pasto February 18th. We arrived in Buen Pasto. We stayed in a small hotel in Buen Pasto, and every day, every morning, we would drive the trucks to the Estancia Laguna Palacios to collect fieldwork, or to do fieldwork. And the primary objective, the, um, the number one goal of this fieldwork was to try to collect, try to recover a sauropod dinosaur. So a dinosaur with a long neck, a small head, a big elephant-like body, and a long tail, a plant-eating dinosaur, that my friend Marcelo Luna of the National University of, of Patagonia San Juan Bosco, the Universidad Nacional de, de la Patagonia San Juan Bosco, found in 1995, I believe. And so um, we've wanted to collect this sauropod for many, many years, but other projects, other priorities kept getting in the way. And so, um, but it was, it was a great honor and a great pleasure to be part of the team that uh, finally went back to this site and, and, and collected this animal or started to collect this animal. And um, it proved to be an even more exciting discovery than I think we had imagined. Um, so when Marcelo found it, I know that he found the sacrum, the hip complex. The sacrum is the part of the spine that connects to the hip bones. But in the time that had passed since we'd been to the site the last time, erosion had exposed more bones. And so it turned out that there was much more of this skeleton present than I think any of us, probably including Marcelo, thought. Um, so we were able to uncover um, about maybe three or four vertebrae from the neck called cervical vertebrae. Um, at least five, probably more like six, seven, maybe even eight vertebrae from the back. Uh, these are called dorsal vertebrae. Um, what was exciting about those is that several of them were articulated. So in other words, still in life position, still connected as they would have been when the animal was alive. Um, there were also bones from the front leg, including a humerus, the upper arm bone, and a radius, one of the, the forearm bones, um, and also from the hind leg. So the femur, the thigh bone, and connected to the femur, the tibia, the larger bone of the shin. In fact, the knee um, was, uh, of this dinosaur was bent in the field, and that was really exciting to see. It could mean that other bones, such as the hind foot, which is really rare to find in these kinds of dinosaurs, is there as well. Uh, on top of that, there were ribs. Um, there are um, parts of the hips as well, the ilium, the bone from the hip points. And so all in all, um, probably between maybe 25 and 40 percent of a skeleton already, and we haven't even, you know, really, uh, we haven't, we definitely haven't finished the quarry, and we really in some ways have a very long way to go before we know everything that's there. But um, this skeleton, we do know, belongs to what's called a titanosaur. A titanosaur is a type of sauropod dinosaur, so a, a subgroup of the long-necked dinosaur group. Titanosaurs are very interesting animals because they're, they seem to have been very diverse during the Cretaceous period, the third and final period of the age of dinosaurs, but most titanosaurs are known from very, very poor fossils. And so whenever we have a skeleton of a titanosaur that's as complete and well-preserved as this one is, or seems to be, and of course it's only going to get better as we collect more and more of it, uh, that's an exciting discovery. This has the potential to has the potential to be a new titanosaur species. It has potential to because it's relatively complete. It could act as a kind of a Rosetta Stone or a keystone for figuring out the relationships of other kinds of titanosaurs. And so that was very exciting. That was our number one priority, and we were able to um, through the process of 
plaster jacketing. In other words, when you take uh, strips of burlap soaked in wet plaster of Paris, you wrap those around the bones, they harden to make a shell, kind of like a, you know, like a doctor casting a broken arm, something like that. They harden to make a shell that you can then take back to the lab. And among the bones that we took back to the lab is this. This is the shaft of the femur, the diaphysis of the femur. We had to separate the femur into multiple pieces to be able to, to bring it back because the whole thing is something like this long. It's you know more than a meter long. Um, we were able to bring back a couple of the dorsal vertebrae, the back vertebrae, um, and that sacrum that Marcello found all those years ago, that sacrum that had rolled down the hill, and in his words, he saw the sacrum and he looked up, and that's how he found the skeleton. That sacrum we finally got back to the lab here in Commodore after all these years. So it was, like I said, an honor for me to be a part of that uh, expedition, and I was very glad that my colleagues here invited me uh, and Lindsley and Kara uh, to join the, the team and to be part of that, um, which was, you know, honestly a magical experience. Um, en el cañón Las Orquetas, en proximidad de la localidad de Buen Pacto. Estamos trabajando en niveles del miembro superior de la formación bajo el real, donde en algunos depósitos aparentemente hay canales, son cosas todavía que tenemos que estudiar desde el punto de vista geológico. Se han encontrado una serie de restos eh, de eh, un saurópodo que si bien están eh, en su gran mayoría desarticulados, los huesos se encuentran asociados y con algunas vértebras eh, dorsales que se encuentran articuladas. Esto le da un mayor interés, una mayor importancia al hallazgo, ya que es poco frecuente encontrar en saurópodos los restos eh, Bueno, tuvimos la suerte de encontrar bastante material. Creemos que es un titanosaurio por algunas características, como por ejemplo en las vértebras dorsales que encontramos, que eran aproximadamente 5 son las típicas láminas que tienen este tipo de saurópodos. Así que la verdad que estamos muy contentos porque la campaña fue mucho más productiva de lo que esperamos, al menos en la cantidad de material que encontramos. Eh, obviamente que estamos en un lugar de excavación muy complicado, pero bueno, por suerte ya vamos bien. Eh, no, no creemos que comprometemos la excavación en esta campaña, pero seguramente en la próxima sí lo vamos a hacer. Y bueno, y después en el laboratorio ya podremos ver con más detalle las características de los huesos y esperemos que sea un, un nuevo género. Pero bueno, eso será más adelante.